Fisher's idea is that the interest rate is following inflation. So we, we looked at bonds. If we have the US bond, what is the making of the price of the bond? Two things. We have no risk. So what are two things making of the price of the US bond? There's two things that are included in the, interest, the yield or the interest rate on the bond. Let's say the interest rate is 2%. Why is the interest rate 2% on the US bond? What two things are involved here? Risk free rate. It's risk free, there's no risk. But there's three things in the time value of money, right? What were the two things which are make up a US bond? Why is the price 2%? What are the two things investors? Why is it not zero? Inflation. Inflation, and what's the other one? The real interest rate. The real interest rate. So what Fisher is saying is that, you know, the interest rate is going to follow inflation. If people expect high inflation, there's going to be a higher interest rate on the U.S. government bond. It's going to cost more money for the U.S. government to lend money, okay? U.S. dollars. Do you understand that idea? Yes. The interest rate follows inflation? Yes. Also, the central bank, if inflation is high, the central bank is going to put up the interest rate to cool down the economy. So we looked at the graphs, and we saw on the graph that, we saw on the graph that in the countries, first we can see the blue line is inflation. So first something is happening to inflation here, right? Inflation is going up. Then later is the red line, okay? Inflation is going down here, the blue line. Then the red line is following down. Okay, so the interest rate is following inflation. That's Fisher's idea. Okay. So that is called the international Fisher effect. So he is saying that first he said the difference in exchange rates is equal to the difference in inflation. And now, because the interest rates follow inflation, the change in the exchange rate is related to the difference in the interest rates. Okay? Why? Because the interest rates capture the differences in expected inflation. So, currencies with high interest rates are going to get weaker. Okay? But this can be confusing. People can get confused because it's different. This is talking about in the long term. Okay, in the short term, if the U.S. increased the interest rate, then in the short term, we talk about supply and demand, right, for a currency. So in the short term, the interest rate goes up. We increase the interest rate today on the U.S. bond from 2% to 3%. What's going to happen? Do more people want to buy U.S. bonds or less people? Less people. In the short term? Less people. Why? Short term is less than six months. More, more people. Less less cool. Yes, why more, more people? Demand will be increased. Why? Higher interest rate is more attractive. Okay? Which bank are you going to deposit your money in? The bank which gives you 2% or 3%? 3%. Okay, so in the short term, if the central bank raises the interest rate, it creates more demand. Okay, so that's why this is confusing. Okay, but here we can see high interest rate countries, their currency should weaken. Okay? Here, we increase the interest rate, we have more demand. We talked about the carry trade. The carry trade is short term. Okay? People will get a loan in the low interest rate currency and deposit more in US dollars. It has a high interest rate. Okay? Can you understand that kind of short term transaction? Just doing the carry trade. I want to make a profit just this month or in the next six months. Okay? So I borrow at the low interest rate and deposit in the high interest rate. So in the short term, that kind of carry trade is having the opposite effect than the long term. 
Does that, that's kind of confusing. Is that confusing? This, in the short term, higher interest rate means more demand, and the currency will get stronger in the short term. Okay? But, in the long term, high interest rate means high inflation. Okay? So the currency is going to get weaker in the long term. Okay? So we already explained about the carry trade, and we saw that often the carry trade makes the currency move in the wrong direction. Okay? So, this is talking about the long term. So I just explained that because that can be a little bit confusing. <coughs> so why the currencies have high inflation expected? So the depreciation of the currency should be equal to the interest rate difference. Currencies of low interest rate countries will strengthen. These countries have low inflation expectations, like Japan. Okay? Do the carry trade people want the Japanese currency to get stronger? If I get a loan in Japanese yen, do I want it to get stronger? No. No. The, the currency I get a loan in, I want it to get weaker. It's easier to pay back. Okay? So that's why the carry trade people is just doing it in the short term. Because over the long term, the Japanese currency will get stronger. Okay? So. Again, the appreciation will be equal to the interest rate. So we're not going to do these calculations because we did on the test. We're just going to look at them, okay? We've done a lot of times already, okay? But let's just do this in a talking way. Just talk through the examples, okay? So we have a one-year government bond rate in the US, 5%. One-year government bond rate in Japan is 2%. Okay? Current spot rate, $1.70 yen. According to the International Fisher Effect, what should happen to the yen and why? So discuss with your partner. That's a question. What should happen to the yen and why? Uh, what do you think? Have a guess. The yen is going to get stronger or weaker? Two options. Why? That's correct. Why? Yes. 
Okay? So we just learned that the low interest rate currency is going to get stronger. Okay? Yes. Why does the low interest rate? It's related to inflation. Why? Japan will have low in because Japan has a low interest rate, it has low inflation. So how much percent is the yen exchange rate going to change by? Park John Wan. About how much percent is it going to change? Mm. Per year? Yes. Three percent, right? So the year the difference in the interest rate. US is five, Japan is two, the difference is three percent. So it's going to change by about three percent a year. So now look at the second example. The one year government bond in the US is now one percent and Japan is three percent. So discuss this again, what should happen to the yen and why? How much percent should the yen change by? Right, the interest rate is uh, different. So the US has a, a what? A lower or a higher interest rate? Lower interest rate, right? So US one will get stronger, Japanese one weaker. So here the yen should appreciate get stronger 3% a year, lower rate of inflation in Japan. Okay. So, second example, higher rate of inflation in Japan. The yen is going to get weaker, depreciate weaker. So we have the same formula, it's the same formula as before. Okay, using the interest rate that we used already. We talked about under the par interest rate parity model. So both the interest rate parity model and the international Fisher effect come to the same conclusion. Their conclusion is the difference in interest rates is deciding the future exchange rate. And they make the same equation. Do you want to do all the calculations again? <laughs> hmm? Are you sure? No. You're not sure? Yes, but are you sure? Yes, you're sure. So here we can just we can just talk uh, through them, right? So here's the spot rate, Great British pounds, U.S. dollars. Okay, interest rate in the U.S., interest rate in the U.K. Which currency is going to be stronger? Be very quick to answer. I say it's why. Low interest rate is going to get stronger. Okay. We then we do the calculation. We insert the data and we solve. We solve and we find that the exchange rate is going to be uh, changed from one five five six zero to one five three three one. Okay. This means that the pound is getting weaker and the dollar stronger. Okay, European terms, the other way around, US dollar, Japanese yen. 
the United States 0 0.29 and 0 0.14. This is more like today's, these days, historically low interest rates, right? Which one is going to be stronger? Why? Because they have low interest rates. Lower interest rates, okay? So we insert the data. Spot rate today, 76.84. In the future, it's going to be 76.61. Okay? So that means that we get less yen for one dollar. So it means the yen is getting stronger. So we're going to look at some tests, like we mentioned before, the tests about inflation and the interest rates. So over the short, short term, we explain, for example, with the carry trade, we can have a lot of deviations. Do you understand deviation? Yes. Deviation means going away from what we expect. Okay? So this uh, guy, he studied all the data, and he found out that over the short term, we had a high R squared. R squared is uh, to do with the correlations okay? and the differences. So, he found the Swedish krona change a lot, the exchange rate compared to the interest rate differentials and so on. So let's have a look at some of these uh, graphs, try to understand what's happening. So here we have yen, dollar yen interest rate difference. So the yen, in 2006, we get 120 yen for one dollar. In 2012 we get 80 yen for one dollar. What happened to the yen? The yen is getting stronger. Does the yen have a higher interest rate or a lower interest rate than the US? Lower interest rate. Here we can see the interest rate differential, the, the pink line. So here, the US interest rate is 4% higher than Japan. Okay, nowadays it's getting less, it's very more equal, right? But in 2006, the US had a very high interest rate. Then the US put down their interest rate very quickly. Okay, but still higher than the Japanese interest rate. So what we're seeing is that US here has got higher interest rate, and the Japanese yen is low interest rate, so the Japanese yen should get stronger. Did the Japanese yen get stronger? Yes. Okay, Japanese yen went from 120 to 80. Okay, since that time, the Japanese central bank is doing some very aggressive QE to try and cause inflation. So their, their currency came back up against the dollar. Okay. That's called unconventional monetary policy. Do you understand unconventional? Unconventional means like not normal. Not normal. So, the last few years, Japan was doing some not normal activity, printing a lot and supplying a lot of money. Japanese yen got weaker again. So especially when the central bank does unconventional policy, uh, the, we may not see that the graph is working correctly, right? What about in the eurozone? So uh, here we can see one exchange rate, euro to US dollar, 1.5. I was in the US at this stage, I thought it was very cheap, okay? Then the euro was getting weaker here, okay? Then the euro is starting to get stronger again, okay? And then weaker again. Is there some relationship with the interest rate differential? Yes, we can see that here we have a positive differential, here it changes to negative. Uh, differential. So the US and the European interest rate was changing. Okay. So what, what should we see if the euro is getting weaker? The euro has a higher interest rate or the US has a higher interest rate? Euro, euro, euro has a higher interest rate and then the euro is getting stronger? Euro has lower interest, euro has lower interest rate. Okay. So here we have euro at lower interest rate, it's going to get stronger. Then as this line goes up, we can see what happened again was the euro start to get stronger again. So we can see that the relationship 
Uh, we can also see similar with New Zealand and uh, Norway, especially over the longer term. Uh, so here, Norway a little bit like Australia, or sorry, like uh, Japan, right? Strong currency. Norway is a strong currency. So this is 100 Norwegian krona for one dollar. So if it goes down to 88, is the Norwegian currency getting stronger or weaker? I, here I get 100 krona for one dollar, say. Here I get 80 krona for one dollar. Which is a stronger krona? 80, right? The lower number is stronger. So here we can see that the krona is getting stronger. Here the krona is getting weaker, it's getting stronger, stronger again. We can see here the interest rate uh, differential. So if the krona is getting stronger, what do we expect that is happening with the interest rate? It has a low interest rate or high interest rate? Rolling. Right? So the Norwegian krona has lower interest rates than the US. It's a strong currency, like Japan. Okay? So here there's a big difference. It has a lot lower interest rate than the US. 3% lower, 2% lower than the US. So Norwegian krona is getting stronger with lower interest rate. Okay? Differential just means the difference in the interest rate. So when there's not much difference in the interest rate, we don't see as much happening with the krona, right? Then the interest rate starts to change, difference between the interest rate again. US interest rate is higher, Norwegian one is lower. Then again, the, US, the Norwegian currency is starting to get stronger. Do we have any question about this graph? Uh, Norway is the export country or import country? Norway has a lot of oil. Uh, mm. Norway exports a lot of oil and fish. Mm. But your question is, does Norway usually have a current account deficit or surplus? Let's check and see. On trading economics. Quick trading economics Norway current account. It's even quicker than finding on the <coughs> going in. You can just type things into Google, right? So let's have a look at ten years. Anyway, uh, we can see that. At the moment, they have some uh, surplus here, right? So, exports is higher than imports, 66 million, imports 51 million. Okay. So, it's generally going along as a surplus. They're selling oil and fish and other things. Okay. If the corona is stronger and their, their export is down? Yes, like Switzerland, same kind of issue, right? I guess around this time, if we, you know, there was a euro crisis. What do you expect to happen to the krona in the euro crisis? To get stronger or weaker? If the euro has some crisis, is the people going to buy or sell the krona? They want to buy. Yes, it's safer than the euro, right? So we can see that here. The, uh, maybe the currency, if we look at the currency against the current account, it doesn't always have exact relationship, but we can imagine that here the Norwegian currency started to get very strong. Around this time there was a crisis with Greece in 2012. Switzerland had the problem around this time too, right? So Norwegian currency starts to get strong, then the current account can go down. We can have that, but not an exact science. More or less. Okay, any more? Any more questions? <clears throat> so we had the purchasing power parity model, which was saying that inflation, difference in inflation, is going to tell us what will happen with exchange rates. Okay, so there are some issues, problematic issues. First one is. We need to forecast inflation. Can anybody forecast the future accurately? 
Mm -hmm. Can you forecast the future accurately? No. It's not easy, right? So we have to forecast future inflation. For a lot, for 10 years, for 5 years, for 10 years. It's a little bit challenging. We saw we can look at the market rates on the government bonds. What does the market think? We can ask the experts in the IMF, all the researchers. But they could make mistakes. Okay? It's easier to estimate inflation for short times. But the problem is we're, we're saying inflation doesn't have much effect in the short time period on the exchange rate. Easy to find the inflation, but doesn't affect much in the short period. Then the other issue for the international Fisher effect. This one relies more on the market data to make a future inflation. Okay? But it also this one includes more the real rate. We we said the US bond has the inflation and the real interest rate. So the Fisher effect is talking about this, right? It assumes the real interest rate is always the same across different countries. Okay? But one problem with this one is that the real rates can change across countries. And the real rate can change over time too. Okay? So it might not be just inflation which is affecting the interest rate. Okay? The real rate could also be affecting the interest rate. Okay? Here we're talking about the interest rate affected by inflation and the real rate. Okay? According to the Fisher effect, the real rate stays the same. It assumes that's the same. People have the same patience okay? In, across different countries because now we have a globalized world. So people can invest anywhere. But in reality, it might not be the same across countries. People might have some home bias. They might prefer to invest in their home country. So they might be able to accept a lower real interest rate in their home country than in another country. So the interest rate might not be only on inflation. So if we look at the next, uh, if we look at this data, we can see that in Japan, they seem to have a uh, lower, slightly lower real interest rate. Okay. So then the other countries, maybe the Japanese investors. Real interest rate is also related to economic growth. Okay. If the economic growth is higher, then people want a higher real interest rate. Okay? Because they have a lot of investment opportunities in, the, in this case. So if they're going to invest in government bond, they want to get a higher real interest rate. So we can have uh, some difference across the countries. So let's take a break now for 10 minutes. If you have a question about your exam, you can ask me during the break time.